Hey guys, my name is Yoko Chen, and here's my life at SVA. I'm currently a senior student studying a film in School of Visual Arts. I am a director, a producer, an editor, and a first assistant director. I'm very glad to have this opportunity to take you guys and also take myself to look back to the, all the works I've done throughout the years, starting from the portfolio that I submitted to SVA four years ago to now the thesis project I'm uh, working on. Um, I think the biggest achievement that I gain is not just learn how to use those film equipments, um, not just learn the knowledge about film theories, but also truly evolved from a young teenager who only sort of know that she wanted to take film as her lifelong career into a real young artist that find her own voice and style in storytelling and filmmaking. So let me take you guys to all the artwork I've been doing throughout the years and I hope you enjoyed it. Starting from my portfolio, um, this is something I've never showed to my friends actually. I don't know because it's embarrassing or what, like I just never had this chance to do it. I have to like dig into my hard drive really hard to find it. Um, this is something, this is a short film that I did at the end of my high school years um, about my personal experience in high school um, that I struggled to survive in an environment that is very different from me. Um, I really bring my own personal feelings and experience into it. And uh, even though now looking back, there's a lot of room to improve, but I'm very glad I did it. And also that set up the bottom line that I now realize I have a specific continuous theme that I've been doing in my all my film works. Um, which is mental illness, um, inner stress, uh, personal feelings, um, something that is very intimate and very uh, subjective in a way. Um, I'm very glad I did it and now I really see my growth in filmmaking. The second one I'm going to talk about is something that I did um, back in my freshman year. Um, for my production class. Um, this is a rom-com called Meat. Um, something actually, I think looking back, one of my favorite works that I did as a beginner, young student filmmakers, um, this is something that I really start to step up my film production game. Um, I really made a lot of effort into art design, set design, camera design. And I think it's the first one that I've ever hired professional actors work with. Um, that is truly an amazing experience. I love, I love working with professional, talented actors and actresses. They really know how to turn a character that is written down on script into something so vivid in real life. This one actually has a lot of production values and um, I'm very proud of myself. I'm going to tell somebody that you like her. So what's the problem? Well, um, I've never hooked up with anyone, and I don't really even talk to girls except my m mother, my grandma, uh, oh, and Coco. Who's Coco? My dog. Oh, oh so nice. Buddy, you know what? You definitely came to the right person. Let me help you get a girl. The third one I'm going to talk about is something that I did um, back in my second year for my production class. And this is something that is truly, truly challenging and educational um, as a director, as a producer, um, to learn how to handle a bigger scale of production with limited money and time. Um, the topic itself, the prompt itself is also very challenging because I remember our professor asked us to make a film without dialogue. Not necessarily a silent film, but without dialogue. Um, I find it very, very inspiring because this goes back to the main core of film, which is visual storytelling. Because nowadays, a lot of films and TV shows are more and more dialogue driven. Um, it is actually pretty hard to tell a story 
without words. Um, so I wrote about a piece um, about a young adult, Robert, uh, who accidentally broke his phone in the morning and has to go out without his phone for a day. Um, he's forced to look around and observe the stuff around him because he got nothing else to do. Um, and he accidentally saved an old guy's life when he's waiting in line to get his coffee in a coffee shop. Um, I remember I had to bring like 30 something extras in order to make this coffee shop looks like a normal, real functioning coffee shop. And I had to like contact all my film friends from my year, from um, freshman years. And I think this is how a lot of uh, my underclassmates start to know me is because they came to my set that time as extras. Um, it's very, very fun, but very, very intense because we only had like nine hours to make the whole film actually with this many of uh, people and extras to coordinate with. And it's very challenging, but it ended up pretty well and I liked it a lot. The next one I want to talk about is something I made during pandemic, literally during pandemic when everything was shut down. Um, it all began with me getting so emotional one night. Um, I just sort of feeling upset about not able to go back home and my struggle of being an international student here. Um, for years and my longing towards seeing my family and friends. So I wrote down a piece um, in Chinese and my friend read it and they was like, you should turn that into a film. And we did it <laughs> with three people, uh, one single camera that I'm shooting with right now, my own Sony camera, no actors, no those fancy professional production stuff um, literally everything at so minimum um, it's a video essay but more like a narrative slash documentary infused work that have me narrating at the back uh, reading the piece I'm, uh, I wrote and the visual wise is me preparing a big table of hot pot uh, to all my friends uh, not only Chinese friends, but also those American friends that I, I met here. Um, it was really great. It turned out so good that people are telling me how emotional they got after seeing my film. I'm very surprised because there's nothing fancy. There's minimum production value in this film, but people really, really get touched and get emotional by it. At that point, I started to realize a really good piece of artwork is not with those fanciest cameras or, or professional um, production and, 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 and A-list actors, but something that you really put your heart into it. You really put yourself into it. That's something that will move people, that will touch people's heart. Um, that is a huge education for me as an artist to understand the power of artwork, of putting yourself into it. And that really helps a lot after with the thesis work I'm working on right now. I found that 
到底对我，一个迷茫前进的年轻人。The fourth one is a short film called Eclipse.、Um, this is something that I'm really, really proud of.、Um, that I did back in the beginning of second semester in my third year, right before the pandemic hits New York City. It was very, very scary and stressful because I remember back then, everything is ready to go, and suddenly the school closed down. And I had to run to school and run to production office where、um, the school rent us equipment.、Um, I have to chase them around and asking for my equipment because if I, if I don't have it, then I'm not able to make this film.、Um, but yeah, thanks to all the friends, my fellow filmmakers who really supported me, and this film turned out pretty well. And I submitted this film to multiple New York film festival. And it actually got nominated, got selected, and won some award. I think this is a work that truly developed my skills as a director, as a visual storyteller. I started to develop my style in visual storytelling, which is expressing those inner feelings, those personal emotion,、um, through a very subtle and gentle way. This is a story about a young artist who is failed, who is broken, who is at the bottom of his life. Everything just goes wrong, and he decided to jump into a river to end his life. But a homeless kid accidentally shows up and asking him for food. It interrupt his suicide. Um, the conversation later on he has with his kids, really give him a chance to reflect on himself, to learn how to cherish the stuff he already has, and really pull himself together and decided to move on. Um, I really love this work because everything just so gentle, and so subtle, and nothing is directly sad. Um. Those feelings are just slides into your head.、Um, the visual, the art, is very clear. It's gray, dark, but also very beautiful with the hint of light from street,、um, with the distinctive New York Williamsburg Bridge as the background.、Um, it is just something that I think is. Her success in visual storytelling, and really helped me a lot to learn how to express feeling with camera, with art, with acting,、um, how to combine this thing together to make a successful short film. You should hang them up. People don't like them. People don't like me. The world hates me. You know. No one's told me they like my paintings in a very long time. Jesus, all in all, studying SVA is such a magic experience. I'm really, really appreciate and feeling grateful with all these people that I meet,、uh, all those friends, the teachers, are just so supportive and just give me this confidence and positive feedback that really keep me pursuing film as my career. Sometimes being an art student can be a little frustrating and confusing because not like math or science that you have a set of strict rules or theories or formula to follow with. Being an artist meaning you have to create everything by yourself. You never know what kind of work you're gonna do. You never know what kind of career you're gonna pursue at the end. Um, it's very scary, but it's also the fun part of it. Anyway, this is my life at SVA, and I really hope you enjoyed it. I will see you soon. I'm Yoko Chen. Bye.